Hey guys, today as we look into the subject of career, we're going to look at the question of, well, why don't we just use past experience to determine what the best career should be? I mean, if you're watching this, you might be in your 20s, you might be in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, and the things, no matter what, you've had some experience, like you would have had maybe a couple of jobs here and there, you might have had some holiday jobs, you might have done some odd stuff here and there for your friends, and surely, if you've done a few things, you get a pretty good sense of what you want to do with your life, right? Right? And you know, for a lot of people, the answer is no. Like, I've seen people who have done maybe four or five different varied careers. And when I talk to them about this idea of a purposeful career, this one thing that you can do for the rest of your life and know that you're going to do it for the rest of your life, it's not always so clear to them. So the question is, does past experience give us a really good sense of what we want to do? Now let me explain. There are two very basic reasons why the past careers aren't a good indicator. And I think the most fundamental one is that past experience is often based on other people's opinions on what you should do. So as an example, a lot of us pick our careers based on like what your mother thought was a good, was a good idea. So somebody might say, well, you know, Uncle John's got like a little supermarket that you, maybe you should go there, stack some shelves, you know, mummy's idea, right? And then you go, you go do it. Now that doesn't always mean that it's the right career for you. Maybe she just wanted to get you out of the house, right? Or maybe she just thought like this was a good internship experience or hey, you know, somebody's son is a doctor, you should go be a doctor too. So it's other people's opinions. Now, what if you go by say what, uh, what education you've had? So perhaps you've done an exam and if you're from some of the countries that practice some form of like streaming or that they recommend that because based on your, your grades, you should really be in like an engineering class or like a design class. Now that's common in lots of countries and lots of cities. But you know, it's, it's really based on what someone else thought that you should be doing. And that brings me to the second point, which is that a lot of these recommendations for what people should be doing is based on what I call a drop-down list. And you all know what I'm talking about. You know how when you go and fill in a form uh, somewhere in a government thing or like you, you're applying for something and they ask you for your name, your email address and then at some point they ask you what your occupation is and uh, there's this little drop-down list that has everything from accounting to like events people to recreation people to like people who do like like their veterinarians or whatever. And the thing is that there, there are all these pretty standard categories that, that you're in. And if you think about it, lots and lots of the cool jobs and the really purposeful jobs in the world just aren't on that list. I mean, if you decide to join World Vision and perhaps you are in Nigeria or Ethiopia trying to figure out like why some people are still poor, why are they still hungry, it's not on that list, just so you know, right? I mean, if you're an accountant, it's on that list, but if you work for World Vision, it isn't. Or what if you were a wildlife photographer, it's not on that list either. So this is why I think to a large extent, you'll find that a lot of the careers that people choose with their hearts, they don't quite belong in other people's opinions, other people's vision of, of where, where that is. And this is why I'm suggesting that we might need a different way to help people figure out what it is that they want to do. So then the natural thing is that people start looking for, well, is there a way for me to figure out what then I should be doing? And I think what most of us are seeking is, is not just a simple like, okay, can you see what my strengths are? Maybe I should go do this job. Because that's the third thing that we have to consider before you start looking for like a job that you really want is that just because you're good at something doesn't always mean that that's your life purpose. So let's, let's try that on for size, okay? Well, one of the things I tell people is that just because you're good at telling jokes doesn't mean you want to be a comedian, right? You see where I'm going with this? And I know of someone who is a really talented baker. When she bakes birthday cakes, oh my god, it looks like it's from the Ritz Carlton or something. It's really, really good. And you know, lots of people have told her, I think you should be a baker. I think lots of people want to order cakes from you. And her response was, well, I enjoy making cakes. I like making them the way I like it. And if I were to become a baker, I would have to bake what other people wanted me to bake. And I would have had to bake it uh, when they want me to bake and the quantities that they want me to bake. And I'm like, no go. So the thing is, she's really good at it and that doesn't always mean that she wants to do it for a living. And this also means that if you look into your own life, some of you love badminton, some of you love golf, 
Some of you love board games. That doesn't always mean that you want to do this for a living and you may be very good at golf or board games. And again, that doesn't mean you're going to be Tiger Woods or, or something, right? So this is why. And I think sometimes uh, when we look at what people want to do as a form of purpose, sometimes it's also down to what is the function that you, that you perform. So that means, think about how many of us are kind of pigeonholed in terms of the work that we want to do. Like I remember in the class that I was teaching just last week, now, this, this woman who said that I want to work with animals. I want to make sure that we release animals from suffering. And I asked her, why haven't you gone and built a career in that area? Because she was so passionate about it, right? And she said that I don't have the qualifications for it. I'm not a vet and I, I don't have... I, I was really bad at biology and chemistry. So there's no way they're going to accept me into vet school or wherever it is I have to, I have to do. Now, the interesting thing is she's very good with administration. So she's done a lot of the back-end stuff. And you know, it's, it's never really occurred to people that you can actually go be part of an organisation that looks after animals, but you don't always have to be the one with the syringe injecting them with chemicals. Or you can always be the person who's organising forms and applications and that kind of stuff. But what's important is that the function and the purpose that you produce is that you're helping animals. Okay, so that's one important thing is that if you are exploring astrological profiling, and if you are, or any other kind of profiling for that matter, and if you're looking at where your strengths are, because I get asked about that very often, I want to know what my strengths are so that I, I know that I can make it a profession. Just consider that strengths and purpose not always the same thing, okay? Now, that comes to the fourth point, which is that you're going to need a tool that does a lot more than just profiling. Because the truth behind why a lot of people aren't doing the careers that they are really meant to do is because, now get this, this is the craziest part, okay? That people actually prevent themselves from doing the careers that they want. So that means, it's like I've got people saying that, well, I would really like to be a fill in the blank, right? So somebody says, I want to go and make sure that the workers have got like rights in, in the hotel industry. And then when I ask that, well, why haven't you? And you know, there's this whole lot of uh, reasons. It could be, well, I don't want to have a target on my back. Or I'm, I'm convinced that the management is never going to say yes. Or I've got this other job and I think I'm quite safe there. So maybe I'm not going to leave that just to help some workers. And so you see that if you think about like, how, how do we help people transition from like not happy job to happy job, right? You would think that it's just, okay, let's do a profiling and let's have them. Okay, now you, you know what job you're supposed to do. Why don't you just quit this and move on, right? You would think it was that simple, but it isn't. Because even when a profile is right in front of you and you kind of have it there, it describes exactly what it is that you want to do. If we're being honest with ourselves, the fact is there's this stuff and there's this stuff over here that is stopping us from, from making the change. So it's a mixture of I'm not good enough. I don't think people want to pay me for it. Or it's like other people are already doing it. I don't think I'm going to be as good as them. Or it's like it's not a legit career. Or it's like, yeah, I don't know anyone who does it. I don't have any way of getting into it. Yeah, you know, there's the internet. You can like email them, tell them you want the job, right? So the thing here is that there are a lot of these obstacles are essentially psychological obstacles. And quite often, it's not really the truth. You know, lots of people are, are great at what they do. And even if they aren't, the fact is they're so passionate about it, they work harder than anyone else. And if you really wanted to learn something, you'll pick it up in two months, three months. So that what this means is that if you're looking for a way to be able to make a transition, this is the fourth reason why past experience doesn't work. Because if you've never done it before, you've never had people tell you that you're good at this, and uh, you've just never had a taste of what it feels like to be successful in this thing that you want to do, then you'll find that you actively prevent yourself because you've never been successful before and that's why you haven't tried and that's why it goes in, a, in this vicious cycle. So guys, if you're thinking about making a really big career change for yourself this year, next year, you, you feel it's time for a transformation, here's what I don't recommend. Um, you don't want to take a piece of paper and say, okay, what has my past experience said about, about my career? That, is, that isn't always the best um, uh, use of uh, your time. Perhaps the past experience is good for a few things. Like it tells you what you don't like, right? It tells you that there are some types of people you don't want to work with. There are some types of work experiences that you don't like. 
But in terms of being able to say for sure that there's something that you definitely want to do uh, as a purposeful career, it's not the best um, indicator. All right. So uh, this is what I wanted to share for today. And uh, please stay tuned. We have lots and lots of videos that give tips on how you can make a transition from where you are into a much more purposeful career, more meaningful, and that you can use the strengths and the abilities that you personally have. Okay, so stay tuned to the channel, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video.